It's one of the most ambitious, one of the largest projects in Europe now. What we aim to build is a network of connections. It's not just the central airport that will be in the, at the heart of it, but most of all the railway connections that would allow uh, all people in Poland and in Central Europe to get there. And we want to do it through building high-speed railways because uh, especially recent events have shown how important it is to be able to swiftly and efficiently transport people and goods uh, when it uh, is simply needed in Europe. We are facing constant threat to our security from Russia. Russia is uh, waging aggressive war against Ukraine and it uh, doesn't hide the intentions uh, to attack also other countries. And we, if we want to be resilient, these attacks may take place as in, a, in a form of, of, of military, of physical uh, kinetic conflict, but also in a form of hybrid threats. One of those uh, is, um, is the, uh, these, these type of threats also affect infrastructure networks. So the more advanced they are, the more resilient they are, the better they connect the countries in our region the safer uh, are our people. This is the goal that we ultimately all have and this is why we are uh, today meeting for the purpose of better coordinating our efforts. Well, we want to encourage all the countries to uh, be better connected and also to use the same universal standards to uh, build the network, to build the, the system and then also to more effectively manage it. If we have one universal standard, it is simple to connect our national uh, railway networks into one larger Central European network and then obviously be more efficient, more competitive, uh, better able to address the needs of our citizens. This is why it's so important that we meet today, that there's very good cooperation with, between Polish national railway companies companies and Rail Baltica also with the Czech railway company and we aim to extend it even larger, also having in mind future cooperation with Ukraine. We obviously count very much on cooperation with external partners, especially those with experience in investment of this type. It's no secret that we are working together with, uh, with the Republic of Korea in terms of uh, building the, the, the airport in, in this project that's already the cooperation has started. And then uh, the project of uh, railway connections, we obviously will also need uh, partners that have some experience, that have some um, um, capacity to help us uh, develop this and we certainly are open to investments from all across the world, not just uh, the European, the Central European countries, but it includes uh, all our uh, partners and allies. Well, the key message of our today's conference is the joint statement from Poland, Baltic States, Czech Republic, that we want to act in the coordinated way. We have same interest, we take same approach towards the development of railway infrastructure. And uh, frankly speaking, we not only speak about the railway in infrastructure, we speak about the railway offer to the customers, to the freight, and of course, same conditions, same as conditions for sake of military mobility. So we want to get integrated, we want to act uh, together and of course Poland is in the middle. So the responsibility of Poland is unique, just as unique as uh, CPK project and just as unique our location is. I would say that we have invented part of the logistic uh, type of thinking uh, so we were we are ahead of some trends because thinking in the terms of multimodality in having on one place the railway traffic and the air traffic is the concept uh, which get more and more uh, popularity among the Europe and among uh, and globally CPK project is first project in the world which uh, act in the in such a consequent way uh, towards the multimodal delivery of the multimodal model it means that we have at one at one place the main transfer railway station for Poland with uh, railway lines coming from 10 uh, direction at one place and at the same time we have main transfer airport for Poland. So Steve was commissioned to do a cost-benefit analysis of high-speed rail in the 3Cs region. Now what is a bit 
special about this report is that for the first time it approaches high-speed rail from a network perspective because normally we look at infrastructure on a project per project base. Now what's interesting is talking with CPK and then the stakeholders who have collaborated to this study, what, what really stands out is the difference between high-speed rail in the three seas regions and the preceding high-speed projects where we note that really the three seas region has taken a lot of lessons on board like uh, the strong cooperation, um, taking on board new initiatives like joint capacity allocation, joint timetabling, a joint reservation and distribution system, um, all interestingly um, from a passenger perspective. So it's not a, it's not an asset-driven approach. The CP, the high-speed rail projects. It's really also customer-focused, um, and then so a, a strong call for integration and standardization. That is for me what really stands out from the, the start of our analysis. I would like to highlight that the report has demonstrated that the projects all together as an integrated network can uh, drive benefits which are exceeding the cost of the investment and these benefits are even greater if you take the whole network as an integrated one rather than as a patchwork of different projects and schemes as has been evocated in the in the meeting and the conference by the different parties. So I think uh, the report has highlighted, for instance, that the travel time benefits would be very great. People might be able to get quicker together where they want to go. So that might be uh, for business purposes, for leisure, for other purposes such as education or even for resilience of, of security. Um, the report has also highlighted the potential for the benefits uh, of, of the environment. Uh, so we've seen that uh, a number of carbon reduction uh, emissions uh, have been measured by, uh, by the network, by the report and the analysis. Uh, and also we've seen a number of uh, social benefits of the uh, network as a whole. So we can see that there's a number of increased opportunities uh, to connect people together, to make uh, the region work together uh, as a whole, and also to improve the labor market. So I think what's very interesting is that this is a, a stepping stone for the future development of the network. We've seen it with the memorandum of understanding that has been signed today. So it's really interesting to see that this is something that will develop and it's already something that everyone's very committed about. I think one thing that struck to me was effectively the strong formalised cooperation. So what came out of the questions to, to the project leaders is really that one of the things that they want to tackle are one of the big risks in major projects is the need to plan long ahead, um, do joint integrated planning and don't shy away from changing the planning. So I think from a major project perspective this this was quite, they are quite mature in their thinking even if the project is in a very early stage. I think from my point of view what's very interesting and even striking in, in a good way is that they're willing to align the long-term vision for the countries, uh, whereas sometimes in Western Europe every country has does their own thing and they would just want to develop their own projects. I think it was very striking today that they all wanted to align the long-term vision, they wanted to have the same goals, they just wanted to have uh, what's best for the region and for the people living in the region. So I think that alignment of vision is I think really good and I, it's something that I think just will, will drive the success of the project I think in the region. I think that now we have uh, two challenges. One is the war in Ukraine, which shows that infrastructure is really critical. And um, the dual use uh, for civil use and for military use, uh, for example, for Rail Baltica, shows that uh, we need a European infra which can be secure, which can be efficient for uh, all uh, the countries. So my, my priority is really cooperation. I see that, uh, you know, cooperation is sometimes in uh, international agreements, in papers, but not in reality. And trust and confidence is necessary and the will also to support the uh, rail operators and to have a plan, a common plan, agenda, uh, and also to have a coordination in details because uh, you can have uh, the best intentions if you are not coordinated to see what service you want to give to the citizen or to see uh, what uh, is the, the access for, for, for tracks and for rail. Uh, transfer switching from uh, road to rail, uh, it will be inefficient. So uh, having cooperation is a way to boost, uh, you know, uh, the um, 
the realization of this uh, high-speed uh, uh, network. And I am very thankful for Poland because Poland is very much engaged in, uh, in different projects. And for um, my corridor, is, it is a chance. I have a good cooperation uh, with this country and the actors uh, from the ministry, the different ministries and also from operators. So this is very important because Poland is a sort of a middle place uh, which connects uh, many countries. So the Three Seas initiative is a good one because it gives a sort of mobilization of neighbors and give a very strong input for corridors. You know, the, um, the TNT uh, network is really uh, organized to uh, create a unique market and to have the same, uh, you know, um, same qualities of, uh, of capacities, services, speed, comfort, security for users uh, everywhere in Europe. So this is very important that the three C's can be really integrated in the network strategy, a TNT strategy, it is the case. And also uh, it's important for me to take the lessons from this cooperation in my vision of the development of the corridor because of course uh, we the the interconnection uh, between for example cities ports uh, between the seas and between uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, terrestrial loops as I, I i say about rail this is very important for climate too uh, it is the second, uh, uh, objectively the second reason why we need to accelerate, it is the climate change. So uh, rail is a solution and the Three Seas initiative is also about climate challenges. The TNT policy is constantly uh, financed by uh, special tools. Uh, one, the main one is the uh, CEF for the interconnection, uh, the cross-border projects uh, and the new lines. Uh, it is very important that uh, the uh, national strategies integrate this security of funding. And their obligation is to spend the money they have because it's paid by all the European taxpayers. So it is also a responsibility if you are, uh, you know, uh, beneficiary from, uh, from this uh, help. But this gives a security for projects. And because we have to, to finalize the corridors for the main lines uh, in 2030, it gives also the agenda for the private sector to know what they are doing, when and why, and with this security of financial support.